Good, good evening, everyone. This is the meeting of the uh, Transportation and Public Safety Committee. It is being recorded as we record all uh, uh, of the uh, meetings we have, and the, the, they're then posted. Uh, I remind everyone that while uh, others are, I, I will recognize people and that while people are, are speaking, I ask people not to interrupt them. We're going to change the order of what we've been doing slightly tonight. Uh, after we do the approval of minutes, we're going to open what what's called the public comment se session. And then we will ask people who have comments to uh, uh, whether they are uh, from the public, if they will have we'll have excuse me please let, let me finish and don't interrupt that, that they will have two minutes uh, to comment uh, so if we take a vote on a specific issue we will have a period of time when the public will be allowed to comment what we do when, although i don't think there's going to be a vote tonight or there's going to be an issue that's going to be open for discussion that we first allow committee members, then we allow jet board members, and finally we will allow uh, public to ask questions or make comments. And again, they're limited to two minutes. Uh, not not the committee members or the board members are not limited to two minutes. Uh, uh, and if you have any questions about that, uh, uh, please feel free to either ask me in the chat or offline while we're making the change. So again, at this, John Quint now has a, a timer, which we don't need right now, but we will need later uh, so that people will know what the time is as well. So uh, uh, John, why don't you call the, the, the roll and people can identify themselves. John, you're, you're on mute. Sydney Meyer, chair. Present. John Quinn, secretary present. Ernest Augustus. Sandy Balboza. Uh, present. Juliet Cullen Chung. Here. John Dew. Present. Doreen Gallo. Present. Cheryl Gelbs. Brian Howell. Here. Is that you, Brian? You're reverbing, but I assume you were answered. Patrick Kalaki and Ciro Scala. And I'll remind the people. Ciro's here. Ciro, say hello. I here, hello, I'm here. Okay, okay, thank you. We have a quorum. I'll remind people that the CB2 rules require committee members to have their. Uh, cameras on if possible. Obviously, some people can't do that, but the rules require it. So the first thing we need to do is to approve the agenda. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, John Do. A second. Any objection? Hearing no objection, the uh, agenda is approved. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from October 21st. Uh, when I reviewed them and I, uh, last time was, they did not note that I, that I had called in from, uh, the Galop from Ecuador. I was in Ecuador at the time when I called. So I would ask that they be amended to include that. Are there any uh, corrections, additions to the minutes? And I thank you, Brian, for doing them. So do I. Hearing none, the, the minutes are approved. So the first thing is the, the public comment session, which we're doing at the beginning. And I will ask people if they would would uh, uh, put their hand up or otherwise indicate that they want to talk or just wave at me. Okay, I don't know. Who, I, I it says the baby, so I assume it's like no. You need to put your you need to put your uh, your uh, 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 you, yes. You need to unmute yourself. 
and identify yourself. I'm not the baby, obviously. I think my son or my grandson put that in. So I'm not that, that computer savvy, but my name is Joan Whitsett, and I am here representing the board of directors at Pratt Towers Incorporated, located at 333 Lafayette Avenue, um, between Clawson Avenue and Grand Avenue. Um, I thought there would be more rep, more folks here representing 333, but I guess it was such short notice, so I'm going to have to go it alone. Um, I just we're, we're asking for your support for a one car length no parking sign to the right of our driveway exits onto Lafayette and DeKalb Avenue, and we're doing this because it's pretty dangerous. Um, when we exit our buildings for years, co our, our shareholders and residents have been complaining about how dangerous it is. So, because when you exit the either of those um, driveways, there are a line of parked cars, and then there's a, a bike lane, one car left, and then two lanes of oncoming traffic. It is impossible to see oncoming traffic unless you pull into the bike lane, which of course is dangerous to the cyclists and to the motorists as well. And we've all asked for your help twice. We've asked for approval from the Department of Transportation and have been denied twice. So we're just bringing it, we feel like so dire, the situation is so dire. There was an accident back in June um, because it's just, it's just so difficult to see oncoming traffic as you try to exit our driveways. So this said, we're coming back again, asking for your help. I went online and I saw in transportation's website that uh, some issue had been resolved in and around my, my building. I don't know what that means. Maybe one of you know, I don't have a clue what that is and who knew about it and who was told and what the resolution was. Um, um, I see my two minutes is up, so I, I don't one. know how clear. <laughs> I, I have one. I have one question for you. How mm -hmm. many how many parking spaces you are you asking to be removed? Just one. Well, we figured that at least one would give us a clearer view. You know, always we would be able to see the oncoming traffic a lot clearer. Right now, there's a park that park, if there's a car parked at the corner of our driveway, we cannot see what's coming down the Cab Avenue or Lafayette Avenue, and, and unless we ease out into the bike lane. And that is so dangerous because the bikers come down that street flying sometimes. I okay, mean, so it's just a miracle that no one has been hurt. Okay, so I'm going to refer this uh, to the board staff so that the staff can uh, uh, find out what's happened with because we need to find more information out from DOT before we. Uh, uh, I'd appreciate that. Okay, and, I, and, I, and we thank you for taking your time. And uh, is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Sid, I want to comment on John Whitsett's request. This is John Dew. Uh, Hi, John. How you doing, John? Mm -hmm. um, Sid, I happen to have an aunt that lives in 333, who I visited mm -hmm. last week. And I can all also attest to the fact that that parking lot uh, exiting onto both the Calb and, and, and Lafayette, which uh, runs the B38 bus which runs every five minutes uh, uh, can be very problematic, specifically since that is a super block, a very long block. So we already have speed humps in the middle of the block to try to slow the uh, drivers down. Uh, so if we could just do a letter of request supporting that they study that exit for removal John, of the- John. John, hold that too. That 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 actually uh, goes and actually goes under new business. But I would like to have more before we we uh, uh, we we do this. Uh, I'd like to see if there anybody else who wants to talk at the public session. Anybody Excellent. else? Anybody? I'm going to say it three times. Anybody else? Okay. Not here. Not hearing anyone else. The public comment session is closed. And now we'll go into the presentation by the uh, Dumbo Ferry Improvement, for the Dumbo Ferry Improvements. Is there someone here? For okay. Hi, everyone. Hey, this is Brady from EDC. 
Um, I am turning on my camera now that we are ready to rock and roll. I appreciate you all taking the time to see us again. I know we have come here a couple of times in the past, um, and particularly we were here a couple of months ago. Um, good to see a lot of familiar faces here. I am joined by a couple of folks from EDC, so I'm going to ask that they introduce themselves, but I'm Raddy. I'm with the Government Community Relations Team here, um, and happy to uh, see you all. I'll toss it over to Franny, and then I'll let others go. Hi, um, I'm Franny Civitano. I'm the near, or um, I am the deputy director for NYC Ferry uh, at the Economic Development Corporation. Uh, Jennifer Cass. Sorry, just taking myself off mute. Um, hi, my name is Jennifer Cass. I'm a senior vice president in the capital program of EDC, um, who is leading the design and construction of the um, ferry landing. Nikita. Hi, my name is Nikita Sharma. I'm the project director also at uh, Capital Programs here at EDC, working alongside with Jennifer Cass, um, leading the construction of the landing. Um, okay, anybody else that we need to introduce, um, Nikita, or are we good? There's uh, Vicky as well, who will be joining me in the presentation. She just said hi. Cool. Hi. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so we were back here um, a few months ago uh, when we had a closer landing for uh, a little while just to make sure we had some some restorations done. Um, we at the time finalized that work and made it um, as safe and operational as possible so we can restore service. As you know, a lot of people depend on the service um, to commute to and from work or do other things around the city. Um, so now we are at a point where um, there was some additional work that needed to happen, but we thought it was uh, prudent to just wait until um, we had a lower um, ridership time, which is typically right around this time during the winter time, um, and make sure that we circle back and, and finalize that work. So we're here to talk to you today about um, what some of that work looks like. Um, Nikita is also going to walk through um, and remind you all what happened um, earlier this um, year, some of the work that we did, and just um, particularly there are some parts that require a shutdown. Um, of the landing and just wanted to talk to you all around um, kind of what that work looks like so we could come to um, some sort of um, understanding of kind of where you all lie with with preferences of, of some of that work and just make sure that we um, do the work accordingly. So I'll stop there and I'll let Nikita run through the deck. Um, it's only about five or six slides, so we should be done um, relatively quickly. You are not muted, Nikita. <laughs> um, can I share my screen or? Yeah. Okay. Does everybody see my screen? Yes. Can you go into presentation mode, Nikita? Yeah. Trying one second. Okay, so um, hi everyone. My name is Nikita Sharma. I work at EDC. Thank you for having us. Um, thanks Roddy for the quick summary introduction. Um, so just, I wanted to do a very quick recap of the work that we did um, earlier this year. Uh, as you're aware, we began work in April of this year and understanding that this landing is one of the most heavily used um, landings with the ridership, uh, we wanted to uh, reopen as quickly as possible. And so uh, this June is when we reopened this landing. Um, as, and as part of our scope, we work to improve the ADA accessibility uh, as improving ferry operations by reorienting the barge so the vessels can dock easily. Um, into the next slide. Um, so as, as the landing, um, as we reopened the landing in June, of this year, we we did that knowing that um, that it was oper operationally safe to do so. However, we also knew that later on during this year, um, when it's not peak season, we would have to return and complete some of the remaining work. Um, I will pass that over to Vicky in the next slide, just to kind of run through quickly what that work entails. Um, but in terms in discussions with our construction managing management team. 
Um, we understand that there is some work that we need to do that involves nighttime work for about uh, four nights. Um, allowing us to do night work is going to take approximately four days of shutdown. Um, if we don't do any night work, it's going to add an additional two weeks of work, approximately two weeks of work on top of the actual duration of um, the remaining construction that we need to do. And so, as I mentioned earlier, this, this is a heavily used landing. And so we're really trying to um, mitigate the impact we have when we do this work um, and be able to uh, reopen this landing um, uh, with the completion of all the remainder of the work. So um, performing night work is actually going to give us the ability to do this in a safe and quick uh, way. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Vicky for the next slide um, and she'll be able to go through the remaining work. And if you guys have any questions, we'll, we'll answer them towards the end of the presentation. All right. So this slide is showing the different, the six different tasks that we still have remaining. Um, the, they can all be done during day shift and the top four can be done at during the night shift, which is what we prefer. Uh, the bottom two cannot be because they, uh, one involves a very large crane and they both involve having the ferry ships come to the site so we can work with them to make sure things are set up right. And that needs to happen during the day. The, the day shift would be from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So it would be the landing would be shut down for most of the, the day and then reopened at four. The night shift would be from 10 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the next slide and, and show you what these different tasks um, are. Vicki, I think, sorry, can you go back one slide? Uh, I think this is supposed to say the night shift is 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Yes, yes, it should. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so these ones can be done day or night, but we prefer night. Um, the top one with the red arrows, it's the gate at the very entrance. Uh, it, we have to shut down the landing because it's the gate coming in when we're doing this work. Uh, the next one down is the green arrows. It's the bow loader, which is where the, the boat touches the barge. Um, we can have the landing open while you're doing this because there's two bow loaders. We can just use the other one. The next one, the light blue arrows, the handrail on the edge of the barge, we need to make some modifications to it. And the the bottom one, the dark purple arrows is the gangway handrails. We're gonna extend them a little bit on both ends of it. Um, so those are the, the different tasks at the site. And then go to the, the next slide. And then there's two other tasks that need to be done during the day. Uh, the top one with the red arrows is the fender extension. This is where the boat touches against the barge and there's a, a fender that it kind of leans on. We're gonna extend up, that up a little bit higher. And there's a, pendant relocation, which is the light blue. And it's it's kind of a hand controller to, to drive the, the bow loader. Um, and that's also on the front of the barge. And those those two tasks both need to be done during the day. So those are the, the remaining tasks to be done and they're on various locations at the landing. Do you have any additional questions? Sid? Uh, any committee members have questions? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Who has questions? But John, you, John, do you have questions? Anyone else? Oh, I do. Julie, Andy, Julie, Juliet. Yeah, Juliet too. Juliet, why don't you, add, why don't you go first? Uh, thanks. And sorry, I'm outside where it's dark, so my camera's not on. Um, but when you guys, when EDC came to us last time about the um, ferry closure, uh, we asked you to look at the um, queuing opportunities and really think about that on the pier because you relocated the ferry from um, a, a place that was not so crowded to a place that is extremely crowded. Now, I've taken the ferry in the summer and the, the, the line even snaking around with the, uh, with the um, uh, stanchions that you have has snaked all the way up the block and like down to the street um, and like past the um, uh, ice cream factory. 
and it's completely blocked the, the entire, you know, pier. So I would like to ask what you guys are uh, doing or what have you done in response to our last round of comments to look at queuing. And I'm letting you know that queuing is still a problem in a, and, and especially in summertime. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so the queuing plan that was proposed was one that um, we worked on and was preferred with by Brooklyn Bridge Park. Um, and I know that they they wanted, if the line ever got past, um, let's say like where barge music was, um, I believe they, they wanted to, to turn it down um, toward like one hotel. So we can look at that and, um, you know, maybe it goes down um, toward Pier One instead. Um, we can we can take a look and see um, which which way to turn that line so that it's not blocking uh, the through traffic like into Pier One and and along that esplanade near the street. Um, I would add that I suggest that the pier be manned um, by uh, a, a ferry operator. The only people that are manning the ferry are at the at the gate, and they come off the boat and they take your ticket and then they get back on the boat. There's nobody that manages the line. There's nobody that like manages the times when the ferry is not available. So I, in order to manage the situation, I would suggest operationally there be a person there. Um, we are paying for a person to be there and they were supposed to be staff there all summer. So if that was not effectively happening, I'm gonna bring that back to our operator because um, we, do, we do staff that landing during peak times um, on weekends and throughout the week. So I will go back to the operator um, and share that comment because there absolutely should be um, staff and people who are managing the lines. That is one of their sole purposes. Sandy, you wanna go next? Well, I, I, I'm confused about that. So the, the park is responsible for the queuing and if it goes over a certain uh, length, who is supposed to move it and and so you're saying the the ferry ticket collector is out there and is that person responsible? So I'm not sure if the park is responsible or the ferry. Um, I, I may have been unclear about that. Um, so the queuing plan, so where the queues were and how they wrap around, um, that was a plan that we devised in conjunction with Brooklyn Bridge Park and this is you know, the, the plan that um, uh, we, we both collaborated on and they, you know, we, we wanted to give this one a try. So, but we, the ferry operator is responsible for managing the queues um, and we, they staff people during, um, basically from about 10 a.m. until about seven or 8 p.m. on week, weekends. And then similar times, but um, maybe a little bit more truncated um, on weekdays during the summer peak season. So there should be there should be people, there should be staff who are not the boat staff who are there to sell tickets, answer questions, and manage the queues. So if it gets um, overcrowded, is it, does the ferry staff keep people from getting onto the to the Fulton Ferry Landing Pier, keep them back. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how this works. Um, but there was a restaurant planned for for that pier as well. It doesn't sound like there's room for everything. <clears throat> um, so to answer the first question, um, we they do not keep anyone from coming onto the pier. Um, their their goal is to make sure that people know which queue, which line they need to stand in. Um, and make sure that they're in the appropriate place um, and that they know when the next ferry is coming and that, you know, the line essentially is not just one big blob, that it's, you know, a, a sort of orderly, um, maybe not single file, but, but, you know, some kind of organized line. Um, and to the second question, that, that is something that would have to be referred to Brooklyn Bridge Park. I'm not sure of the plans. Um, as far as I know that the restaurant is still planned, but they, they would have to confirm that. Ryan, you're next. Ryan. Thank you. Um, sorry, just unmuting myself. Uh, I'm a little confused about the 
preferred uh, language on the shifts. I don't really, um, if you say preferred, whom are you asking to make a determination as to when the work happens? Right, I think maybe we could be a little clearer about the ask here. So um, we have to do the work, um, several tasks, um, you know, extending the, the bow loader, which is where the boat kind of touches up um, to make sure that it's the right height to accept 350 passenger boats. Right now, the, the landing can only accept 150 passenger. You know, we're adjusting the, the, um, the hand controller height. We have to switch out the gate, um, fix um, one of the pads um, that you walk on, extend some handrails. So all of these tasks, require um, work, ongoing work um, that Nikita, correct me if I'm wrong, is about a month's worth of work. We don't have to shut down the landing for a month. Um, we would prefer to do some of these tasks that require um, no one to be on the landing overnight so that we can avoid shutting down the landing for an extended period of time. So the request and the discussion is, um, if we do night work, um, which would be from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m., um, and that does require like work to happen overnight, so that's like the gate, I think, and the extension of the of the fender racks. Um, so that's equipment that's there. It's vessels in the water, um, switching things out. Then we only have to shut down the landing for four days not necessarily consecutive days, but for separate times. Um, if oh, we are- so, Sorry, Franny, if I can just interrupt. Yeah, um, please. We essentially, um, if we are able to do the night work, we'll save about two weeks of construction. So it'll be less disturbance to the community. Um, we, we would have to do night work for four nights. Um, and if we, are able to um, to do the night work, then that would shorten the total construction duration by about two weeks. I assume those night would be during the weekday. It would not be on weekends, right? They can be scheduled during the week weekdays. Yeah. Weekdays. Um, thank you for the detail, but I, I guess the, my question is still somewhat unanswered. Are you asking the committee to write a letter, so, you know, endorsing that? I'm just, I'm just not sure who is. Are you asking us for anything to say we would prefer yeah. night work versus not night work? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, um, the short answer is yes. Um, the goal here is to have the work done in a way that is, of course, as least disruptive as possible, uh, but the disruption can be seen from many different angles, right? It can be seen as a ferry rider, as a park user, as a whatever, right? So um, in conversations uh, with, our, with our partners at Brooklyn Bridge Park, um, you know, we outline kind of the different um, construction options that, that were laid out in the slides here. And, you know, basically what they said was, you know, from a park perspective, we can do any of these options. Um, just wanna make sure that, you know, the community board is on board with whichever um, of the options you all, you all um, end up going with. So the short answer is yes. Yeah. We would not do you know, the, um, the overnight work, if this committee says absolutely not, no, we should not do that. But if you all feel that it's pertinent to try to get that done and reduce the length of time that the work is happening and that the ferry operations is closed, then that is on the community there to decide. Thank you very much. Sarah, and then, Mr. Chair, I have other questions, but I'll let other members of the committee ask. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I, I had a couple of questions. Uh, I'm not sure of logistics. You, you, you came to our committee, and Ms. Chung mentioned uh, that we mentioned the line and and how you arrange that, but you never got back to us with that. I'm not sure whose jurisdiction that is. Is that the Brooklyn Bridge Park jurisdiction? Because you had a meeting with them and worked out some arrangement, but yet we were not. Uh, in tune to that. I'm just, I just like to know how we, the committee, coordinates with you and how you coordinate with us. What does Brooklyn Bridge Park have to do with it? That's one question. The other question I have is you mentioned that the, am I correct, that this improvement will increase ferry dockage 
more ferries can come to the dock than before. Is that correct? Bigger ferries. So, so um, a few things. The Fulton Ferry Landing, like the pier itself, is Brooklyn Bridge Park jurisdiction. Um, so we have permission from them to be there and to, to have the landing. Um, and anything we do on the pier, we have to like run by them. So we were able to put up, you know, an A-frame earlier in the summer that has a map of like where the queues are. So to help people ground people in which line to be in, we got permission from them to put that there. Um, so let me the, interrupt you. So Brooklyn yeah. Bridge Park gives you permission for that. We on the on the community board do not really have much of a say in that situation. Am I correct? Um, there is no official approval needed. Required from from, by us. Correct. In that aspect. In okay. that, yes. Um, we also, so to get, to do any construction at, at this landing and, and um, we, we need a permit from Brooklyn Bridge Park. And um, so that is, that is another part of it. Um, so there is no and, oversight by the by the community board as far as a, a permit or anything like that. You don't have to really get our approval for that. No. Okay, but you get it. You you're coming here to get a, our approval for the work that you intend to do, so it doesn't disrupt the community. Is that what I'm getting? We in our conversations with Brooklyn Bridge Park, um, they advised that if because we requested to do night work and they asked that we get your input before um, doing night work. Because usually, usually their permit is only for the day. Okay. All right, Doreen, you have any questions? You have a question? No, I said I'm not finished with one question. Is, is, is there going to be an increase in ferry service when after you, after you make the improvements? So I wouldn't say that there's going to be an increase in ferry service, like the frequency, I don't think will change much, but we will be able to add larger ferries to come to this landing. All right. So therefore, if I may, just one more question. Therefore, we will have an increase in uh, people using the ferry. Therefore, the lines could really <clears throat> get unruly. So you would have to really- On for a second there. I, I actually would argue that, um, that the lines might be better because we can take more people off the dock. Okay. Um, I don't think that that the the uh, the use of larger vessels would necessarily mean more people would come. And just to add to that, I think the, the the overall purpose here is to make sure that we are able to better serve riders throughout the route. So at other landings as well. So not having the ability to dock some of these larger vessels at this landing. You know, poses a challenge where, like, we're able to do that in other landings across this route, right? So the more and I will do that, the and better. And I will just sorry, ready. No, that's it. Um, and I'll just caveat that that so I I, I don't want anyone to think that overnight we'll able we'll be able to start using larger vessels. We we could start using them on um, potentially on the South Brooklyn route, but the East River route, which um, has our last legacy landing that needs to be replaced at Hunters Point South. That landing currently cannot accept 350 passenger vessels. And we are in process right now to design a new landing there that will be able to accept the larger vessels. So until we can have that landing accept the larger ones, we, we probably can't at Dumbo on the East River route. So it is a, a long-term like goal for us to be able to have larger vessels at this landing, but it won't be overnight. Thank you. Doreen? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I just want to make a comment about what was special and revert back to what Juliet was talking about, about the pier. You know, the one of the sacred spots on the waterfront when it was, you know, abandoned or was this pier and the unobstructed view of the Brooklyn Bridge and the water. And it's been destroyed over and over again. And you're saying, you know, your partner, you know, that Brooklyn Bridge Park has jurisdiction over this. And it really, you know, it never was a public process. So I know the ship has sailed, but um, there were better places for this to be positioned. And a lot of the problems that we're gonna have on the pier could have been avoided if it was a public process and they didn't have the choice over it. 
And about um, the night work, um, I think Brooklyn Bridge Park has demonstrated to the public all of my co-CAC members, many of them are on this, some are on the committee like Sandy Belposa, but Linda is on many people that have participated. And I think that there's so many things coming down the pike that you, you may wanna push this forward, but I think the people that live right there should be the ones to decide. I really do. I think people that live in the vicinity of where the work's going to be happening really should have the most weight of making that decision. That's helpful. And, that, and that's great feedback. I think, you know, partly, and that's something that we can certainly do and, and reach out to those folks and, and connect with them and then also circle back with the community board. Um, but I think, you know, as, as folks that we have existing relationships with, um, we want to check with you all and see kind of where you all are. Yeah, and I appreciate that, but I think there's also there's a, a Fulton Bridge Landing Association, and I think there's also the Dumbo Association, which would probably have more input about the night work and the noise level. And how much, I, I don't know how much noise it's going to uh, uh, engender and whether or not they, they would rather have uh, four nights or whatever uh, uh, Fulton Ferry Landing Association, someone points out. So... Uh, Brian, you have another question? Yes. Um, so uh, I guess the, I just want to point out that um, during the work on the Brooklyn Bridge rehabilitation, there were many complaints from uh, the Fulton Ferry area in Dumbo about uh, work being done at night. Um, and, you know, DOT made many claims about precautions uh, being taken to lessen the noise um, that really didn't seem to be enough. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that, that that was a huge issue that went on for years in, in that uh, particular neighborhood. Thank you. John, you have a question? Yeah, some of it's already been raised, but is there, does any of the work, is any of the work going to generate noise? And concomitant to that, have you spoken to any of the neighbors, like, like the River, uh, River Cafe, they serve beyond 10 o'clock. And, and is the activity going to be disruptive to their operation? I don't think there's much else going on, though, I guess uh, some of the businesses on, uh, on uh, up the street will also still be open at that time. And will there be any, uh, do you know how much noise the work will generate? It, so I, I, I uh, uh, have, has this been presented to the CAC at the, at the, at Brooklyn Bridge? We are going there in the first week of December, right, Linda? And have you spoken to the people at the Fulton Ferry Landing Association and to the Dumbo Association? Not yet, but we can certainly do that. And that's why we have these conversations, right? Um, so yes, so certainly um, can follow up and have those conversations and also plan to talk to the cafe folks as well. Just want to come and, you know, have this dialogue ahead of time. So, so then I would assume we would, there's nothing for us to do because we really don't have all the input that we uh -huh. would want before we make a decision. I would, okay. I, would, I would move that we table anything until those conversations take place. And oh, sure. Can I so here's what I can. So here's what I can. So can I um, make sure I hear this right and and frame it frame it um, to the community board. So it sounds like um, we will go talk to those groups that you mentioned, um, and then ideally get something from them in writing expressing which either way um, uh, they they prefer for us to proceed. And then circle back and can I um, work on email, maybe um, folks here on the community board and making sure that we should, we're able to close that loop this way. Yeah, and 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 obviously it's uh, with with uh, Carol Ann Church at the at the board. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I would so I would circle back with Carol Ann and just making sure that. Sandy, you had something else to say? Yes, um, I want to agree with Doreen and uh, everybody else who. I, I find it troubling that um, the way this project started when it first came to the community board 
It was the, the night the work started. There was never any outreach. We didn't know what was going on. And as was pointed out, I think by Doreen, um, uh, you know, we, we just, it, it could have been, okay, it could have been in another place done differently. There was no conversation with the community. So when you say conversation, I, I, I think uh, your definition is different than ours, but- yeah. um, so Sandy, I would, I would just minute, say and I, Let me finish. So, mm -hmm. so there's no outreach. You're asking the community board to decide for the neighbors who are going to be impacted. Sandy, Sandy yes. we told them to do the outreach now. We've I know. But I'm, it, so wait a minute. I mean, it's, it's, it's not appropriate to, to okay, over, go over this. We already told them to do the outreach. So okay. we've told them to do the outreach and come back. Okay. Anybody else want to speak? I thought, yeah, Sid, I'm going last again. Um, can you talk about the number of trips that the ferry makes during the daytime versus the nighttime so that we have a better sense of, uh, and, and, and the volume, the number of people that are riding the ferry in the course of an hour or so, how many times is the ferry actually uh, barked and embarked? Um, I don't have that number off the top of my head, uh, so I can look into that and get back to the board. Um, there are two routes that operate out of here, um, South Brooklyn and East River. Um, and so uh, there are no ferries that operate after 10, uh, about 10 p.m. And so the, the night work would not affect any ferry passengers. Um, it would just be uh, the two week shut down for riders if we couldn't do the night work um then we would have to close the landing for two weeks and can you speak to the number of complaints that you received during the last uh work order uh, the construction yes um complaints about noise or complaints about uh the ferry being shut down uh both um i didn't, I have not heard, I'm not aware of any complaints about noise because um, we didn't, I mean, we didn't, we also stopped work at, I think it was 3.30 every day. Um, so I'm not aware of any noise complaints and we got many complaints about the ferry landing being shut down. I, I don't know the number though. Doreen, you want to speak again or just do you? Yeah, I just want to say one thing, uh, what I think Sanity was trying to say. All of us have been on, um, a lot of us have been founding members representing our associations on the Community Advisory Council for Brooklyn Bridge Park. If Linda didn't go really pursue her relationship with the EDC and Ratty and everybody, this we wouldn't even know about it. And we wouldn't, they wouldn't be before you today. I mean, there's no, um, uh, you know, all of our, you, you will do the outreach. I don't know if you realize that all the communities that are surrounding are on the park community advisory council. So, I mean, we really, you should really have gone to them first. That's all. I mean, I've been, yeah, and I've been talking to Linda for quite some time about this, right? So, I, uh, um, so. No, no, you've been great. You've been great. Yes. But, you know, it should have been initiated by the people like Brooklyn Bridge Park, the administration. And oh, okay. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll let, I'll, I'll, yeah, I won't comment on that. But yeah, so I think, you know, I think for, for us, um, it sounds like this is good guidance. Um, we um, have our marching orders and we can circle back with you all over the next couple of weeks as we um, have the outreach um, that the community board requests. Fair yeah, request. I think there was at least one public person who wanted to comment. Tammy, did you want to say something? Hi, yes, thank you so much. Um, this is actually my first community board hearing. Um, and uh, I, so hi. Um, I actually had a question about the environmental impact of additional ferries. Um, I know that they can spew a lot of bad poisonous air. Um, and is that being considered to the surrounding neighborhood? Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll briefly say something and then I'll let, you know, the more waterfront experts like Franny and others jump in. But um, the short answer is 
our NYC ferry fleet has like some of the cleaner vessels on the water, um, tier three and tier four um, vessels that really minimize that impact. I think you you certainly see that with a lot of the older vessels that are going around the harbor, um, but that is just not our case, right? A lot of our fleet has been constructed over the last few years. Um, so that was, um, you know, paramount to, to the way that we ordered our fleet. So, um, yes, so, um, so that's, I was just pause there. All right, thank you, Tammy. Uh, Bill, you want to, you have, again, you want to make a comment? Yeah, this is Bill Stein. I'm a, a vice president of the Fulton Ferry Landing Association. And I have a question and a comment. Um, the, the comment is that uh, back at the uh, original work to move the, the uh, ferry landing to Fulton Ferry Landing from Pier 1, there were a lot of complaints in the neighborhood because of very early morning work 7 a.m. I think with the with the new fenders maybe there was some pile driving that was involved and um, and that that started at 7 a.m. So it is just night work that can be problematic. 7 a.m. you know loud pile driving um, is also problematic. And um, my question is <clears throat> that um, the presentation seems to allude to the fact that um, no night work would involve two additional weeks rather than the uh, in addition to the four days. Is it is that the case or is it, you know, so is it three weeks total or is it just four days versus two weeks? Peter, can you can you just clarify the duration yeah. of work and then how much of a portion of that we anticipate would be a landing closure? Sure, sure. Um, so the entire landing, um, the entire construction work, as far as we know at the moment that we've worked out, um, will be roughly about one month. Um, and if we are, uh, if it is a go to do the night work, uh, the four days of night work that we're talking about is within that month. Um, if we're not able to do the night work, then it adds an additional uh, two weeks to the one month uh, that we need to do. So it'll be roughly about a month and a half of work. Yes, thank you. Anybody else uh, willing to speak? Uh, obviously, uh, at this point, uh, we've uh, we've sent it back to uh, uh, for consultation with other of the neighborhood uh, people who are concerned, and hopefully, uh, when it comes to us the next time, we will be able to come up with a re final recommendation. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you having us. I appreciate um, the thoughtful feedback. Um, and I, I think this is good guidance. So we'll circle back in a few weeks. Um, and this is why we, ha why we have these conversations. So I appreciate it. I have a question before you go. Okay. Excuse me. When were you thinking of starting construction? I mean, I, in, in a world where today everyone says, go ahead and do the work and get it done, probably mid-December-ish, Nikita. Would have been would have been the time frame. Yeah, it would be a little bit towards uh, mid to end of December. We still just need to work out um, a permit that we need to get from uh, one of the city agencies just to renew that permit. Uh, but we, this is another thing that we wanted to discuss with you guys first. Um, but yes, ideally by towards the end of December. And and so we, you will we... be back to the to the transportation committee in and around I think the fifteenth of December. If, if we uh, the 16th. find it appropriate, I think if if we are, if if Caroline, if I if I send you over, folks saying they're fine with this work and you still deem it appropriate for us to come back, happy to come back. If you see people in writing saying this is fine, then also defer to you. Okay, well, and not me, the committee. Yeah, correct. So the committee. <laughs> sure. And I and I will and I will just say that um, it's really important that we get all of this work done before the spring schedule because once we get into that, then then we're in the same situation we've been in in the summer where there's there's too many riders, we can't do the work, and it doesn't make sense. So we really want to try to isolate this for over the winter when ridership is much much lower. And we're happy to move on it quickly. It gives you a month to go get, make the presentations and get some feedback. And I don't think we have a problem moving quickly when that happens. Thank you so Great. much. We will Thank also you. go to the community advisory committee. Um, and we will also talk to the folks that you all have mentioned today. So we'll circle back um, over the next few weeks.
and, and talk to the businesses too. I, I don't know of if the, I assume that I, I don't know the membership of some of the associations. I assume the membership that some of the some of the businesses are members of the association, but uh, clearly uh, River Cafe and there are other businesses on the other side on Pier One that that would be impacted by uh, the work at night. So I would ask Very you to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next thing on the agenda is the chairperson's re chair Pearson, chairperson's report and the update on J Street Busway pilot. And uh, Carolyn, is that you? You sent me a the uh, a presentation a a update from DOT on that. Do you have that available? <laughs> No, I don't. I'm sorry. I can bring it back up really quickly. Um, I added it to your report because I thought you'd attended the meeting. I'm sorry. I was supposed to attend the meeting, but I had something come up. Oh. Did you? You didn't attend the meeting either, did you? No, I wasn't able to. John, I was hoping you could spot did you me. You attend, John? Did you attend that meeting on the J Street Busway? No, we've lost John. Yeah. Well, well I, you know, I've read the material. Obviously, they, they they were reporting back that the uh, uh, busway has been successful in speeding up the buses. Uh, there are still the continuing issues of the, the, uh, the bike path. They were, and I don't know from the report that whether the bike path has been been uh, running smoother. Uh, uh, I hope it I hope it has been, uh, but obviously uh, that the pilot, uh, they, from what I understood, the pilot was going to be uh, uh, um, uh, was the pilot was successful. Do you have do you have the uh, that report, the page report that you got, uh, Carolyn, that we can post, or do you want to see if I can find it in my material? I really, let, let, let me see if I can get into my um. It, it should be in the in the uh, committee drive. It's on the committee drive. So see if you, can you if you can put it up and uh, uh, so that it can be seen by everybody because at least the one other person is asking it for it. Hold on for a second. Let me see if I can find it. I couldn't find them in the committee drive before, but are you looking for the PDF I just, the PowerPoint? I just sent it to the chat. I sent it to the chat. I gotta get back to the can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. You want to go through? Uh, yeah, there we go. I can. I'm screening through it now. Shows the timeline opening. It shows that it's speeded up. It's with some speed decreases in September. They're they're monitoring it. Now there's park, the, the illegal park. Now there was a, uh, the uh, city conducted, yes, on Tuesday, the city conducted a, uh, uh, a, a parking enforcement at Navy and Tillery Street, where they towed nine illegally parked cars and they ticketed, I believe, a total of 15 in the area by the BQE, which is notorious for illegal parking. They invited uh, uh, 
council member 11 and they conducted an enforcement and they say they're going to continue to enforce there. We'll see. So it was nice that they did that, but whether they actually will continue doing it, I don't know. Is it possible to to offer comment on the report or sorry, do we need to offer public comment first? Uh, Ryan, if you want to, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. And um, Caroline, I'm relying on your uh, point yesterday about public comment being compulsory for actions requiring board, board items report requiring board action. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point out a couple key uh, items from the report on page six um, showed mm -hmm. that uh, there's really been an increase in the number of vehicles uh, or number of cars, uh, not trucks and buses, which are allowed driving through the, the, the busway during the hours that it's in effect. Um, and, uh, and that has sort of slowed speeds. Uh, a bit. Um, I know just from going out to you know like Smith and Livingston um, that there's a, a fairly small do not enter sign on the like northeast corner of the street. Um, and that is not very prominent. Um, also given that the, the northeast corner is sort of angled back a bit from um, like the direction of Smith. Um, but I know that the DOT is adding a gantry at that location to have like overhead do not enter signs, which I think will be more effective. Um, and the, the second point is that um, people are required to make the first right turn um, off of J Street, uh, <coughs> provided that they you know, didn't enter it at uh, Tillery going southbound or, um, uh, sorry, uh, living single and northbound, um, but there are only two locations for cameras. Uh, the one going northbound is Smith at Fulton Mall, and the one southbound is J Street at Johnson Street. Um, so people can actually enter the busway at, uh, you know, at locations. So say somebody turns, you know, is illegally driving down Fulton Street and then turns onto J Street heading north, they won't be ticketed because the only camera is catching people who are driving through the intersection of J. Smith and Fulton. Um, and so there are certain, uh, I guess, paths that people can take through the busway that are not caught by the one camera in each direction. And that would seem to be a uh, something limiting its effectiveness. Okay. I don't think we're going to take a vote on this one, so I don't think there's any that. But of course, I'm more than happy to hear if if someone from the public would like to raise an issue on that part of the report. Please feel free to. Um, I would like to actually, um, and my name is is Matthew. This is my also my first community board meeting. But I I know you guys are not taking a vote on this today. But I would just strongly encourage any any time a decision comes before you to reinforce this busway to make it safer, to make it more clearly marked along the lines of what Brian was just talking about, I would very much encourage you to do that as, a, as both a bike commuter and a bus commuter. This slice of the city has been a mess to get around for, for so long. Um, and I think, frankly, I've been personally frustrated by some of the slow progress of this busway and the, and the tentative nature and the ways that parts of it have sort of been carved back or carved out as it's gone on. Um, so I would just like to, I don't really have a, a greater point. I would just like to, to urge you guys whenever you do, are in a decision-making capacity around this to sort of to come out in support of it. Thank you. Welcome. We will, we will try to uh, reinforce with DOT to uh, improve the signage. And we'll also talk to the police about better enforcement. Appreciate it. Okay. The, the statement of needs roundup, we, the statement of needs, which everyone worked on, on which I appreciate the committee and other people out, uh, is ready for, sub, is it ready for submission, Caroline? It is. Um, Sid, if I may ask one question, is, is it at all appropriate since uh, Mr. Choi raised the issue? Would it be something, we're not gonna take a vote, but would it be appropriate for this committee to do a letter 
to the DOT asking them to sort of uh, update us on that particular issue and get back to us in that form? Is that something we would do? Well, I think it actually could be raised simpler by uh, Catlio's. You know, they they have the the uh, uh, sessions with DOT once a month at the cabinet meetings. And obviously, I think it would be appropriate to raise it at the cabinet meeting. I don't think we're ready to get a formal report at this point. She's shaking her head, yes. So we'll raise it with the uh, do a DOT at the monthly cabinet meeting. We'll see what they say. You know, and I'm, I'm again. It's one of those times we, we're not getting. Uh, 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 DOT st has stopped coming to our, me our our monthly meetings. It's an issue that's going to be continued to raise with DOT. So the statement of needs from around everyone worked on. I think it's ready to be pre uh, to be finalized, or was it finalized at the? Uh, I know. It's final, so it's been finalized already. It's, it's final. I I just wanted to um review some some tips shall we say um about how need statements should be created and what goes into them um first off there was some confusion um not necessarily with members of this committee but there was some confusion among board members about Um, MTA requests and DOT requests. Anything dealing with inside of the subway is MTA. If it's a bus, it's New York City Transit. And if it's a bus shelter, it's DOT. So if we're asking, for instance, for um, bus shelters with seats and a kiosk, then that's DOT. If we're asking for a second entrance to the MTA, to the York Street Station, then that's the MTA. And it's it, it doesn't have a place, strictly speaking, on the need statement. Because the MTA is not a city agency. And all that will happen is that one, it takes up a spot for an item that could possibly be funded. And um, you know, it, it 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 it's not going to get the sort of attention that we would like it to get. There is another way of raising the issue, but it's not on the need statement. So that's one thing I wanted to see. Second thing um, I wanted to say is that when we create statements, we have to think of two things. One. What is the problem? We need a specific problem that can be resolved through funding. Um, and the other thing, is it a capital request or is it an expense request? And like East and West, the two should not meet in a request. They should be separate. Um, and on closer review, as I attempted to input, I found that some items were both, and this is not just our committee, right? This is all the committees. Some, some requests were both uh, expense and capital. So that's something we want to avoid next year when we do, when we do uh, the process. Now I'll send out a little, um, verb, some examples of what I'm talking about. Um, oh, one of the other things we need to think about is, is it more than one request? Does it, that, that we've combined, we, 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 we have, we, we, we think of something and we say, this is a problem. And um, we extend the thought. And sometimes what happens is that it comes for the purpose of the uh, statements and priorities, it becomes two things. It's not one thing. To us as everyday citizens, it's the same thing. Um, for purposes of the statement, it might be two things. And I'll just read um, 
an example that um, public, stock, public housing stock must be improved. We should install and replace fence use of non-toxic uh, products and removing known environmental triggers. Font pillowcase and mattress covers for families in high concentration areas. So, so, so that's actually two different types of um, asks in there. One is capital, one is expense. Um, for one thing, uh, and I have a lot, but I I will send that out. I just wanted to have this conversation so that, you know, the, the, the cycle is continual. Um, it, it, it's a matter, I think, of time and resources that we try to crunch it into a short period of time, but it really should be a continual process. Um, one of the things I think might be useful might be to set aside 15 minutes in each, after each meeting or during each meeting to talk about an item that we may want to add to the statement. And, and, and then, you know, we have a couple of weeks to, to find information regarding that. Um, and, and so by the time April rolls around, we should have like six or seven really strongly um, prepared comments for the, for the statement and, and needs. Um, I, I want to firmly state <laughs> that the process needs to begin in, a, in and around April. Um, it's, really, it, it's really intense for the staff to be trying to meet the deadline. It's after the deadline, we're trying to create narrative, um, plug it into the portal. It, it's really lengthy. Um, and we need to follow the timeline next year. I know this last year we had um, really heavy agendas that really didn't give us a whole lot of space for discussion on the needs statement, but we just need to elevate it. It's one of the most important things that a community board can do, if not the most important thing. And we, we, we need to just elevate it on our agenda and get, get the work done early. Um, and, and get the best statement out possible because the better our, our statements and our narratives are, the more likely we are to get funded. I appreciate that. Now, Doreen, you wanna say something? Yeah, I, um, thank you for that. I, I, I really appreciate you trying to make this process more effective. I really do. Um, and I wanted to back up what you said about uh, the difference, you know, why, York Street, I know you had a lot of pushback, but um, I know, and you know, that many years ago, we've had it on the spot. Like it was like always somewhere. And we had it on number two for a couple of years in a row. And I, the committee actually talked about taking it off because it wasn't the right place for it. Um, but it did elevate the conversation in the transportation committee. And I'm grateful for that. So I, I just wanna support everything that you said. And, and I, I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm going to see if I can get it. the MTA, which said they're supposed to be issuing the York Street report shortly. I'm, I'm sending them an email to ask them if, uh, what, what the status of it is. Just, uh, okay, thank you for that. My, month, my monthly email to them. Any update? So see, let's, see what, let's see what they come back with. I, I ask about once a month. And I get always get the same answer next year in Jerusalem. All right. uh, any other business, John? You want John? You want to say something? I want to talk to Carol Ann about that um, report that she has to gather at this time every year, and the difficulty that we have in determining what goes on. Uh, and I'm going to give you this example, Carol Ann. Um, there is a move afoot to reduce car traffic and to reduce cars coming downtown Brooklyn overall. So we're doing towing and changing streets and a whole bunch of things. We have not 
gotten everyone together to be on the same page as to how that process is supposed to take place. So it appears that everything is happening independently. So how do we get all of the agencies together on the same page, understanding what the goal is for downtown Brooklyn and what each of their roles is in getting us there and, and, and they're independent on each other. We keep talking to each agency separately and we're not getting far enough with any of the agencies because other agencies have to participate and do their share in order for things to happen. Can you speak to what we can do going forward to get everyone on board uh, 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 at the same time? And the other question I had is, when we put in for all of these wants, how do we know when it's funded and when the specific project starts? Is there a way of reporting back to the committee that the agency has accepted this project and funded this project and it's going to start at a particular time? Is that something that's possible? Those are my two questions. I think that was more than two questions, John, but you'll tell me when. <laughs> <laughs> whether I got them, I do sort of get two. Um, so essentially you're saying that you'd like to have a meeting because that's the only how you can bring all the agencies together to discuss any item is, is through a, a meeting um, that's focused on, on, on the topics that, that you'd like to learn more about or to sort of synchronize might be a good word. Um, I, I think that I think we have to do that at some point. I think it should be going. It should have been going on all along because everything is interdependent on somebody else. If we want to take cars away, for example, we have to have better public transportation. How does all of that interface with each other? You can't just take the cars away. You have to replace it with something else that allows the same function to happen. That's never discussed. We just talk about how to stop cars. You, you, that, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. People have to travel. So how do we make everything happen in conjunction with each other and complement each other? Are you, try, are you trying to suggest we do some comprehensive planning? <laughs> Carol Ann, the city of New York, we have no choice but to get started with it because it's only getting worse and Sid, we did not discuss what was proposed by the Downtown Brooklyn Partnership either. No, I understand. That's supposed to be, they're supposed to come to us in, in December. There is a pres there. So we, we raised with them, they're supposed to come to a presentation to us in December. That's on the agenda for December. And, and that speaks exactly to what I'm talking with Carol Ann about now. The partnership is proposing all of these changes that will impact the ability of cars to travel in the downtown Brooklyn corridor. What are the impacts on the adjacent communities? We don't ever talk about that kind. Well, of no, no. When, 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 when they come, that is that is actually supposed to be part of the discussion, and they're also they they also have uh, we we raised with the uh, we've raised with them uh, 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 Lenny called the Downtown Brooklyn Partnership, uh, and I hope not, not giving something out of school, that he raised with the, with the fact that, that this was not presented to us. And they, they uh, uh, so we'll, they'll be here to discuss with us in December. Now, we do get a feedback. On the list that's presented, all the uh, items on the statement of needs, the, each, each statement of need is responded to by the agency. They come back with whether they can do it, can't do it, whether it's planned. There, there is a specific, in the statement of needs, they will come back with a specific response on each and every one of the requests that we put in. The, some of them that they will say can be done, some of them say they, they won't do, but they will come back with the list and that will take place. The, 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 after we present it to it, there are 
there's a borough uh, uh, consultation, then there's a citywide consultation, and ultimately they, the departments that are responsible do come back with, with, a, with a specific response in each one of the statement of these. Is that correct, Carolyn? Yes, we will have that statement in January. And on the, if, if you can access the Google Drive for the board, uh, last year's um, responses, the responses to last year's uh, is there. And, and, and that oh, I didn't mention it, but since it mentioned the responses from the agencies, sometimes they say this is not a budget request um, in their response, which is why when we have that thought about the problem, we need to be really specific in our phrasing. I got you, Carol Ann, but we have to get what the agency has said to the community board so that we could fully understand going oh, forward. You you get the response. We, the responses are we get the responses back. I know the response. I've seen the responses, and okay, I mean I, the responses come back and they're brought back to the community board. The, the, I, I guarantee you, John, you'll see them. Now, Brian, you want to you want to ask something? Yes, I wanted to um, just uh, follow up with what I believe Caroline was talking about before. Um, about sourcing these ideas throughout the year rather than trying to dump them all in at the end of the year. Um, and and just, just to make sure I understand what you're asking, that we set aside time from every meeting or maybe one meeting every so often to um, to review the items on the list. Is, did I understand you correctly, Carol? Well, to develop the ideas for the following year, for the following statement. Um, you know, something might have occurred. For instance, uh, Mr. Choi made a comment about, uh, you know, making the busway um, more effective. And, and maybe that could be part of a budget request, right? Whether it's cameras, whether it's, um, you know, um, differentiating uh, <laughs> protected a, a protected bike lane as well along there. Um, wh whether it's that, we might say, okay, this is something we should add to the statement. So we should actually have our spreadsheet up and running from now and we just add these things. And so different members of the committee could take the responsibility of fleshing out, you know, writing a 100 word maybe um, paragraph on, on the item and, and whatever um, references or data points that can come with it. And, and so it's a much easier process at the end. Even if we find that we have a really busy agenda, May and June, most of the work is done, we can squeeze it in, we can, staff can be getting working on the input during the summer. Um, so so I, would, I would ask Caroline that we put in the meeting notice that we put in another uh, put down that says request for uh, for uh, budget items for the following year. You know that that we ask people to come up with uh, not the ones that we're already working on, but to try to come up with new uh, budget items for the following year and to put in the meeting notice so that people we that, that that will give people a reminder that that it's part of a an ongoing. Uh, thing that they need to do as the year goes uh, goes forward, and it's not wait. The, we don't wait until the last minute. So why don't we add that in the future as a request for budget? Uh, uh, See, budget. I would add. I would add to just make a differentiation between capital and expense. If right. we could define it at that point, it'll make it much easier, and we could define them carefully and put them in their proper spot in the early days. That may be important too. Well, I think you're better off trying to figure out what you want than figure out what you want. You can always figure out whether it's a budget item or an expense item later on. I think the idea is to come up with the ideas of what you want first, and then then later on can categorize them. I, I, I'm, I don't want, I'm not trying to, to, to categorize. You know, we're looking for things to that need to be done. We can categorize whether it's a budget or expense as as we flesh out what it is. We don't have to do that at the beginning of it. All right. And, 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 just to um, and, make sure that, sorry, food. just I understood you correctly. When you said add to the to the minutes, are we saying that we should 
add an item to each meeting's agenda where we discuss these things? Well, I mean, I mean, yes, it's put on the as a as an item for discussion. Uh, you know, it's it's an item to be both thoughtful and, and discussion. And frankly, you know, it may by putting it on the agenda, we 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 may also begin to get more comments from the community about what they want so that it would be a more collaborative with the community, not, not what we think they want, but what they think they want, which I think is probably more important. Great, thank you. All right, any other business? Now, now I, I, I frankly think that we've done the community forum already. I think that we, we requested for the opening at the big public comment section at the beginning, that, that, that my view was the community forum. Now, now, I will open it and see if anybody else, if there's anybody else would like to be heard in the community forum with a, with, with, with a two minute, uh, uh, well, again, with a two minute guy, if you've already spoken on the issue, I would ask you not to do it again. Is there anybody, anybody, it's not, I don't see any hands, so. Any, I don't see anybody asking. Anybody on mute want to say something? Okay, hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Wait, there was um, the item from earlier in the meeting that we said we were going to move to new business for parking spaces for three. Um, okay, so let's do it as new business. Thank you for that, Brian. It's very simple, Sid. A letter to DOT to study the exits at 333 Lafayette. There are three buildings, so we may need to look at all three buildings to determine if the issue is at the other three, other two buildings. 21 St. James Place, 309 Lafayette, in addition to <laughs> three Lafayette. Mm -hmm. They all have those large uh, uh, parking lots that are for the residents. But what, I, what I said at the beginning, so goes, I'd like to get some more feedback about what has happened so far, that what DOT has done, what the responses has done. And also I'd rather have it be put on the agenda so that, that we can get more people necessarily from 333 Lafayette but there may be people who have other views of this. I'd rather get a, a th their views before we do something on this. We have learned in the past that sometimes when we do something without getting the commun full community input that we wind up having to undo. So I'd rather wait until they talk to Carol Ann about the, uh, 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 the issue, get what the DOT has done on it, so we have uh, some better idea exactly what we're talking. I'm not, I'm not unsupportive of taking away the parking spaces on this or moving to do whatever needs to be done to make it safer. The request is to take away the parking spot. The request is to study the problem. To wait another month to study a problem doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Well, DOT oh, may, has already, I... may has already done something on this, and I really, really would like to hear what's happened before we make a decision. So can I just say this, though? So, so the, the issue raised is one of safety. DOT is not going to require our input on whether or not a safety measure should be taken or not, because, because this is straight up safety. Um, the, the thing is, I, I know that Ms. Whitsett has, or, or the building, um, as a matter of fact, has raised this before. Um, I remember um, my former colleague, Mr. Searles, working on this. Unfortunately, I've lost the thread. However, this doesn't require, this doesn't require a whole lot of com committee work. This Thank is Ms. Whitsett sending a letter to the commissioner. This is you, us, or the district you, office following up with DOT asking, have you studied it? Because they're gonna go take a look at it. Um, what is your outcome and why is, and if the answer is no, we're not going to daylight it, then it's why aren't you daylighting it? I do have a memory of Rob working on this prior to the pandemic. 
And it seems to me that I remembered this having been approved by DOT. I, I don't know what happened. It was just before the pandemic hit. And that's that's almost two years. Carolina, when you say approved, it was approved, approved for what? I oh, well, think that's, I why, that's, what, that's exactly why I want to go to back daylight. and I, after I really, this and get the information, we'll put it on the agenda for next meeting specifically. We'll mm -hmm. get the information together and we'll be able to do a much more intelligent response. Right. Now, uh, uh, Doreen, you want to say something? Uh, yes. Um, quickly, uh, the, I try to handle these things through our association, um, but we're having a lot of difficulty. There's a lot of, of uh, infrastructure work being done in our neighborhood and will continue for the next five years. However, DOT, um, a lot of signs are missing. People are getting code ticketed. We're really trying to get a response from DOT. Um, and most of them stay down because uh, the contractor is Halcyon. So, you know, it, it, it's purposeful in many ways. So um, we're getting bombarded with people complaining about um, parking, you know, that these streets aren't necessarily being uh, worked on and they're not returning back. You know, there's uh, some parking could be created. We, I know that the Dumbo Neighborhood Alliance, we walked around with the Dumbo bid about a year ago and, and wrote a letter and, you know, nothing changes. So, you know, would it be possible for the, com the transportation committee, if I wrote a letter to, to the, the committee saying what we're been asking for, just a letter of support that they actually put the signs back that should be back, you know, okay. You know, you know I, me, that's that's more administrative. The, the committee could do whatever it would like. The committee no, could no, no, you're right. Anything. You're right. I don't right? want to start no, no, that's There's a simple way. Excuse me. Excuse me. There is a simple way of handling that. That is handled through three one one. You need to get a complaint. You need to, you, uh, on especially on a sign. You need to file a complaint and get the complaint number. Then we can follow up with it. Now I know it may be. You know that there may be many of them that need to be done, all right. But if you do that, you'll be able to. That what that when the that's what that's how these things get done now. And unfortunately, that the three one that the DOT doesn't respond to us unless it's a three a three one one complaint. If you make you need to make the complaint, you need to get the complaint number, and you need to follow up to. Them. And if it's a specific where they're a whole area, they, even with multiple complaints, they they will you know they they go. DOT uh, and and three one one has a follow up. They have a timeline line to do that. And frankly, when especially with a sign down, they tend to move on them relatively quickly, and they follow up with the contractor if they don't do it. I'll keep you posted. Please, thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you. I had uh, two points. One on the the Pratt Towers. Um, uh, trying to think of an alternative approach and you know certainly trying to kill two birds with one stone um if, if the point is sorry i know we're not acting on this i'm just giving my my two cents the point is for daylighting then simple you know no parking spot won't do that people will you know stand there they'll leave their cars there during the day for whatever um but dot does take requests from building owners you know management companies to uh, add bike parking at certain locations. And if you put a bunch of racks in the street, certainly no one will park there ever because they can't. Um, and uh, well, trying to give a, a, an alternative way to make sure that like a given spot remains free and clear for um, visual obstructions. Well, DOT I know is adding a lot of daylighting. They've been going around in, in, in this neighborhood and they've been specifically add, adding daylighting. And, and, and frankly, you know, if, if, you know if, if, if they've made the request and they have the response from it, you know, which they should get response from, we, they, they may have approved this. Right? So what, why don't we find that? And I, I, I do know that, you know, self, I, I don't encourage self-help because I don't want to encourage people to violate the rules uh, uh, at all. Uh, so in any, in any case, why, why don't we, uh, 
follow up with with the with with uh, uh, this with the three 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 Lafayette to see if we could help them get a daylight as quickly as possible. Right, thank you. Um, and my second point uh, to you know about uh, not acting on things until we've had sufficient uh, time to discuss them. Um, John John Dew, uh brought up at last month's meeting uh, a similar request for removing parking spots, I believe, on DeKalb between uh, Rockwell and Flatbush for uh, the B thirty eight bus. And I think that we had said, you know, hey, we should, you know somehow take some action between now and the next meeting to ensure that we can discuss that and we're now at the next meeting so I'd like to know how we plan to address that if we do I'll make sure it's put on the agenda for the next week here we go again let's well, wait I wasn't here last time you can't blame it on me said I can blame tonight on you because you go ahead you did everything you could to fight 333 Lafayette. I haven't fought 333 Lafayette. I just want to look. Excuse me. John, 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 you're out of order. It doesn't need to wait till next month. You may have to wait till next month. John, you're out of order. I have motion to dismiss, motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Ron.